RBS Business Research Academy welcomes you in the lecture number 6. In this lecture number 6, we have to understand the concept of the reflective constructs. This video is a completely a theoretical video which will provide you the complete concept of the reflective constructs. So let's start our discussion. My name is Dr. Raimak Sumro and I am working as a professor at Shabti University, Pakistan. So if you want to uh, contact with me then the my email, website, Facebook and YouTube uh, links are available. So whenever we analyze any model in the smart PLS, always it has a two parts. One is a structural part or uh, inner uh, model and another is a measurement model or the outer model. In the structural model, basically we are working in the path analysis while where is in the measurement model, we are checking the uh, validity and the reliability of the reflective model and the format report. So now we talk about the latent variable. So now latent variable, ultimately we call them as an unobserved variable. Latent variable are mainly, are, uh, we are working in the social science. So now these are the concerns which uh, rather than directly measurable. That means latent variable are those type of the uh, variable which we cannot directly measure. So for this one, we have to take the help from the sum of the items. So that's why whenever we are collecting the, uh, any data, we are required to questionnaire. So this questionnaire is helping us to collect the data whenever we are working on the latent variable. So the latent variable are, uh, we can work in the psychology and the sociology are about in the such latent variable, even we can also work on latent variable in the economics. In some of the examples of latent variable are in the psychology, education, political science. You are looking here, different examples are here, like the memory, like the memory, problem solving, optimism, stress, self-worth, con conservatism, leadership, fundamentalism. So here looking at one image, so where uh, the latent variable depression so the repression we cannot directly measure. If we want to measure depression, we have to get help from the fatigue, insomnia, loss of interest, and suicidal thoughts. Another is the observed or manifest variable. So in the latent variable, basically we cannot measure the latent variable directly, but we can measure the manifest or observed variable direct, directly measurable through the questionnaire, include the measurement error. For example, Self-reported on attitudinal, attitudinal scale scored on achievement test, rate of inflation, and the HR response. So now these are those type of the variable which you can directly measure. And in order to measure these type of the uh, like the, uh, 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 observed variable, we are not required to use any type of the questionnaire like we are using in case of the uh, unobserved variable. So now this is the example. Now there are the two type of the models. If you talk about the unobserved variable or latent variable, one is a reflective measurement model, another is a formative measurement model. In the reflective measure model, so you are looking at the, the pointation of the arrow. It is going from the latent variable to its relevant indicator. In case of the formative, so now you are looking here that the arrow is coming down from its item to its relevant. The arrow is coming from the item to its latent variable. So now this one you are looking the quotation of the arrow and you are looking the quotation of the arrow. Both are different from each other. So that's why this is our reflective measurement model and this one is our formative measurement model. So the furthermore formative indicators are assumed to be error free. There is no any error free associated with any formative indicator whereas Reflective cons Meyer have an error term associated with the each indicator and, and which is not case with the formative measurement uh, model. As a rule of thumb, if the item reflect or diptych a construct, it is called the measured reflective measurement model. And if the item form or they are building the one construct, it is called the formative measurement model. Now, this is one example. You are looking here, the whatever is shown to you in the sky or on the surface of the earth. The same you are looking here in the water. So, now the water is providing basically the reflection of the whatever is available on the surface of the earth and are uh, in the sky. Reflective constants are basically indicated are highly correlated. Always you will find a high correlation among the all the indicators of the reflective uh, constant. And the direction of casualty is from the constant to my like that this is our constant and it is coming down to the my this is our my here. Dropping indicator does not alter any meaning. Now, for example, if you drop x2, it will not affect any negatively on the oral meaning of the constant. So the oral meaning constant basically will remain the same. Why? The answer of this question is that for example, I appreciate this hotel. 
so now we talk about the hotel i am looking forward to stay in this hotel so again we are talking about the same uh, object i recommend this hotel in to the others now in these three questions we are talking about the same uh, uh, subjects so now that's why if we are removed anyone now for example if the because of any reason our this item has been removed so now it is no effect on the overall meaning of our reflective construct okay and then takes a measurement error into the uh, account at the item level so you are looking here the in the every item it has a measurement error and the typical measurement typically we use the these uh, in the measurement model or in the social science but when you are working in the smart PLS like the, uh, uh, in this one, so you will not find the, these measurement errors. Reflective constructs, again, according to the, this theory, the measure measures the, the effect of the manifestation on the underlying construct and then interchangeable. Any single item can be generally removed without changing the meaning of the construct. As already I told you that because any reason, if you have to remove any item, from the construct so it will not affect the or it will not change the overall meaning of the your construct so now for example you have to achieve the reliability and the validity of the each concern because of this reason you may be required to remove any item so it is no any negative or uh, effect on the overall meaning of your construct indicator associated with a particular construct should help be correlated as already i told you that the correlation among the all the items in the uh, reflective concept should be high and the causality already I told you that is from constant to the mayor that means relationship goes from the constant to its the mayor and then you're looking here that the relationship between the reflective constant and the uh, and the mayor indicator is can be shown with the help of the outer loadings the outer loading coefficients are estimated through the single regression. Single regression means this one. So now this is a single regression. The regression between the item X11 with its uh, measurement model Y1 and either X12 is a single or uh, simple regression with the extent uh, uh, like the X12 and the Y1. So now these are the outer loading in case of the reflective model and you're looking here these are our outer loadings in case of the formative model we have the outer weights now these are our outer weights and the reflective construct the goal of reflective construct assess to ensure the liability and the validity of the construct mayor and therefore provide support for suitability of their inclusion so now when you think that the, all the items when you think that the, all the construct which is fulfilling the criteria of the uh, 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 criteria of the reliability and the validity you can include that concern into your model then these are the stage 5 reflective measurement model what we have to check we have to check internal consistency through the composite reliability as well as through the Kronba alpha indicator reliability conversion validity and the discriminant validity so now these two indicators are these 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 two are measuring the reliability of the construct and whereas these two are measuring the validity of the construct so already though about the reliability is extended to to which an assessment tool produce a stable and the consistent results whenever you are utilizing it validity is the extent to which the construct measure for what the, is the supposed to measure so now these are the two simple concepts of the liability and the validity. So when you talk about the how we can, what are the rule of thumb for liberty measurement model, then the for the rule of thumb of internal consistent liability. So now composite liability, so it's uh, minimum, uh, it's rule of thumb that the value should be equal to the 0.7 or higher than 0.7. In case of expert research, you can come down up to the 0.6, but not less than 0.6. Otherwise, we can say 60%. And then another is tool is the Kronba Alpha. The value of Kronba Alpha is again same like the 0.7, equal to the 0.7 or higher than 0.7, but not less than the 0.7. Another indicator liability, indicator liability, we can check. The, uh, the loading of the every indicator if the loading of every indicator is equal to 0.7 or higher than 0.7 we can keep it or in some case even if the loading of the 
uh, any indicator is less than 0.7 but higher than 0.4 then you can retain it okay but if you think by removing any indicator whose loading is less than 0.4 and this way you can increase the you can achieve the reliability of your uh, overall construct then for this purpose you can remove any indicator but already if the reliability of the indicator has been achieved and the value of the indicator reliability the value of the loading of each indicator is less, is not less than 0.4 then you can consider is to retain with the model but in case if the in the loading of any indicator is even less than 0.4 or the 40 percent outrightly you should consider to remove it from the uh, from your model and then the convertibility you can check with the help of the AV average when is extracted and its value it should be equal to 0.5 or 50 percent are higher than 0.5 Discriminability we can check with the help of the HDMT, heterotrade, monotrade, uh, criterion in the smart PLS, and as well as you can also check the another the uh, is a formal laughter criterion with the help of the square root of the AVE. So these are the two criteria are there for, from which we can measure the discriminant validity. Convergibility is the convergibility is the extent to which a measure correlates positively with the other measure of the indicator. So now if there is a positive correlation between the two indicators of the same uh, construct that means the convergibility has been established. In order to establish the convergibility we have to check the outer loading of the each indicator as well as the average variance extracted of the each construct. So as an established rule of the thumb is that the latent variable should explain the substantial part of the each indicator's variance in the which is usually 0.50%. This means that the indicator's outer loading should be above 0 0.078 because when you get the square root of the 0 0.078 it will becomes the 0.5 or the this point or this 50 percent so discriminability is the extent to which a construct is truly distant from the other construct in empirical standard so it means when the one construct is truly different from the another construct it means that our discriminability has been established. So now it just can mean and see what the, this word we normally use where we are finding out the difference between the A or B or between the two any type, uh, two item. In the same way, the same concept is applying here. The discriminability when the one constant is truly different from the another constant. It means the discriminability has been established or in other words we can say that the, it means that the either the construct A is made in a different concept uh, from the construct B are the same concept which is being measured by the construct B. For this purpose we have the two tools one is a cross loading and another is a for the larger criteria. So now if the indicators of loading should be of uh, the construct should higher than the all the uh, is cross loading. And in case of the final lacquer current, the square root of the AVE of the each construct should be higher than its highest correlation in with the any other construct. For this purpose, you can refer my lecture number 7, where practically I have assessed the cross loading as well as the final lacquer criterion, as well as the reliability, composite reliability, and the Cronbach alpha of uh, in the uh, uh, in the smart PLS 4. So these are the again the, these are some of the uh, like the tools through which you can measure the measurement model and then if your measurement model is uh, uh, then is the meeting all these requirements then you can then you can keep the same model in your uh, data analysis. Thank you very much for watching this video and I hope this this video has clear clarified uh, your concept regarding the the type are, are the nature of the refractive constraint. Thank you very much for watching this video.